Good morning, folks. First article today describes the new avionics for NASA's next-gen spaceflight systems. These are essential for launches and for spaceflight. These are the most advanced ones ever made. NASA's Earth Observatory is plucking the SO string this morning, highlighting that we're seeing climate extremes on both sides, not just the warming you hear about in the news. For two years, we've shown that cold records are lockstep with the high temperature records, both bowing to precipitation swings. The difference between global warming and global climate extremes might seem trivial to a newcomer, but one is allegedly driven by evil human-made plant food, and the other requires no complex math, just an interdisciplinary game of connect the dots I like to call the climate series. Notice the lie inserted in the middle of the name. Climate number three is a top recommendation for viewers of this channel. You can Google it or come watch the series on our website, suspiciousobservers.org. We've also put our top background videos in there. First one on that list is How to Watch the Sun. It's 30 minutes, but well worth it. I promise you'll be 100 steps ahead of where you were before you watch that video. Let's start the weather watch in the Indian Ocean. Tropical development is heading west, already dropping a significant amount of precipitation and set to dive south, likely to miss populated areas. A low cell just west of Madagascar is stuck there. Rainfall crossing the breach is actually one of the strongest on Earth right now. It's popped to Australia and New Zealand, still eyeing Ian up east of Fiji. It should miss New Zealand diving south. Spot of bad news here though is tropical development is expected to continue at Australia. These have been pretty accurate. Europe, enjoying a break from the hellacious end of 2013, storm after storm. The precipitation holding to the low and to the northeast of it. Polar vortex still elongated with the dips at the US and Russia, but they no longer affect the surface drive. In fact, we got the opposite. A solid low up north is pushing counterclockwise and matches and reinforces a clockwise high pressure cell off the east coast, both shifting north where they meet in the middle. This is a reprieve from earlier in the week in terms of temperature, but the precipitation widespread will continue. Coming to space weather where the proton storm is down to level 1. Polar radiation from the sun finally exiting the equation as we welcome the CME from the X-flare. Do you need any more proof of a weaker sun and lower heliospheric pressure? That impact is piddly. We did not even hit a KP of 4 and my best guess is that even the bitterest of wakes of south pointing plasma wouldn't take us anywhere near their predictions of a KP7 and a level 3 magnetic storm. Flaring continues to be low as well. Yesterday we said the backside of the big group could go to either extreme and it chose decay. We do indeed maintain one delta down south, but this region took a couple happy pills after that X flare and is calm heading for the door. Coronal holes popping open these last few hours. That's nicely timed as well with Venus set to conjoin the sun in less than 48 hours, but we have some good news. We already dropped the watch due to Stanford updating solar polarity to show we are unlikely to be at the highest significance. But we are also showing signs that this is an unusual location uptick rather than large magnitude and it's always better to get these. Five pointers in Cuba are a once or twice a year event. It's about as rare as African upticks as well. We've seen a couple bigger ones near the Kermadec Islands last few days, this one almost hitting 6 magnitude here. I think I'd take these unusual location upticks every time if I could. Condition index remains at B to B+. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.